Hi, my name is Raphael Heath, the Head of Geography at the Royal High School Bath. Um, this is part three of a series of screencast tutorials uh, which is supported by the Royal Geographical Society as part of the Innovative Teaching Grant explaining to you how to conduct geographical investigations using GIS and specifically into investigating crime. Though a lot of the skills can be used for other investigations uh, in terms of just the basic GIS skills that we're being shown. And the first two parts I showed about how you can get web data and then specifically uh, access uh, very specific local uh, GIS uh, file data for visualizing crime in your local area for your very specific investigation. This one I'm going to be talking a little bit how to manipulate and visualize that data. So this is the point we, we got to before where we actually put the data into our map in ArcGIS Online. Um, and uh, just to remind you that uh, if if you wanted to get to ArcGIS Online, you go to www.arcgis.com. You would then uh, click on the sign in options. Uh, the sign in is here for you to be able to actually uh, have an account and save a map. So you may need to do a trial or create a public account, or hopefully you've got an organization account with your school or institution. Um, and then once you're signed in, you go into my content. You may have folders in there, depending on how much work you've done. You can see I've done quite a bit. And uh, this is the files that we created in the last session. So um, you'll notice they've sort of got different uh, types here. That's worth just bearing in mind. I talked about this before. So uh, the features layer is the layers that you can uh, put like a whole series of different layers into a GIS map. So a map is made up of many different layers and they're called feature layers here. So when I created the crime data and saved it as a layer, that's what it was doing here. Uh, the CSV here is the actual original uh, Excel spreadsheet of the data. So that's not actually directly of, um, used in the in the mapping. It's actually used to create a feature service. So the CSV file is just stored and saved in here. Uh, and the map itself with all the layers in, so this map here may have a base map and several layers in, and things I'm working on, different color schemes and layouts, is called a web map. So that contains basically one, two, three, four, whatever feature layers I've got embedded and held within it. So that's called a web map. So the web map is uh, here, and as you can see, I've only got one layer in it, so it's not a very good example of uh, all those features, but uh, it's, that's what it basically is. So. Um, you'll see when you hover over the map, I'll just talk a little bit about the sort of layout and architecture of uh, the different functionality here uh, in ArcGIS Online. You've got various tools here, the measure is pretty self-explanatory, measuring lens distances and so on on your map, uh, directions tool to find places, uh, printing and sharing, uh, and saving I've talked about before in the last one about saving your map and then uh, uh, sharing it. I thought this was shared. saved. Save. Um, so I haven't saved this one obviously, so I'll just save it, uh, major 15 even crime data test map to test crime data, okay, summary, uh, yes file for test data, okay. So um, I've saved, definitely saved it this time, and uh, you've got a sharing option as well. That might not really matter to you, but uh, if you want to be able to provide the links to the map and access it or share it online and access it easily, then if you share with everyone, uh, then it will be easy to uh, to get to the map in the future without logging in. But uh, you don't really need to do that if you're going to log in every time. So I'm going to leave that at this for the moment. So uh, you'll notice that uh, other things you've got here, analysis will come to in another tutorial, base map. So base map gives you uh, the map that lies in the background uh, here. So you've got various types of base map. I'll just pick the dark canvas one. It's quite a dramatic one. It really highlights the data itself. It's not very clear to see everything underneath it, but you get a vague idea of the street pattern and roads and rivers and so on. Uh, but it can be quite a nice layout uh, for highlighting your data. A gray base map is a similar, but uh, a grayer version of that. Um, so they're quite useful. Of course, you've got uh, uh, satellite imagery which uh, can be useful for certain applications uh, and when you're zoomed in it'll look a little bit better than that but um, uh, but uh, it's a little bit muddling and confusing uh, when you've got this type of data at the moment so it's probably not a great one for us to use and so on you've got various other ones so uh, I think the topographic was the one it was on before which I think was a good compromise between it being uh, clear enough to know where places are and uh, and be able to see our data nice and clearly in the foreground, the crime data. Each of these dots, remember, represents crime data, uh, a different crime reported in May 2015, um, and so on. This is an antisocial behaviour crime. Um, so that's the base map uh, functionality. 
Uh, we'll come to add a little bit more later. Uh, we talked about it briefly with the idea of adding layers uh, for this particular feature service uh, if you created it in your contents, but um, uh, we'll come back to that for looking at secondary data in another tutorial. Here you've got certain uh, other things you can do. Uh, if you click on the first uh, tab here, you get a drop down legend, which is the, another word for key. It shows you what all these colors mean. So the reds are all antisocial behavior, the blues are all violent offenses, and so on. And if you click on legend here, it just uh, sort of clears up everything else and just visualizes that, uh, which is quite nice for you for a sort of screen print, perhaps, if you're including this in a uh, written up project. Um, so this drop down menu comes up and down, showing you the uh, crime type that we're visualizing. Uh, this button here opens a table of the data. So remember the data was brought in from an Excel spreadsheet and then is plotted as these locations. So each dot here um, is uh, one of the lines on this column. You can see there's 13,500 features in this uh, in this map going uh, either side of this map area in the Avon area for this month of May. So we're dealing with lots of data, very rich data as you can see. And um, it's got the longitude, latitude and so on, the crime type and so on, vehicle crime, antisocial behavior and so on. So that's the table of data. Uh, that uh, is being represented more visually by this map. Um, you've got change style come back to uh, and you've got a couple more options here under the dot 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 menu here. Um, change transparency so how uh, clear these dots are. So if I make them very transparent you can see they fade away and if I make them opaque it's a much stronger visual. Sometimes it's useful to play around with that depending on what you've got underneath those dots uh, to show against them. Um, can rename the layers and so on um, and also change what's called the pop-up which is uh, I'll show you how that works and why that might be useful so at the moment it's got all this data and if I configure the attributes of the pop-up here you can see all this is being displayed it's really a bit cluttered I don't really need it so I'm just going to click display twice to get rid of them very quickly and I quite like the month and uh, we can keep the constabulary if we like, where police constabulary it falls in. Uh, nothing else is very useful except crime type, I think. Uh, we could have last outcome category, uh, but I'll leave it at that. And I'll say save pop-up. So you should see the effect of this now if I click on one of the crime types. It's a much cleaner pop-up now with just those three variables. much easier to see what's going on, uh, should I wish to use that functionality. So those are some of the things under the sub-menu. Uh, that you can uh, use and play around with. The other thing is this uh, filter tool which is very useful. At the moment we're showing all the crimes that occurred in this particular area and it may be that I'm interested in looking at all the crimes but equally I may just be focusing on a particular type of crime in my project and this is where you can see that uh, uh, you can really individualize your projects from other students in your class so that there are lots of different types of uh, projects being done. Um, which is one of the requirements of the uh, A-level investigation, the visual investigation. So it might be that you're looking at one type of crime type, like vehicle crime, and another student in the class looking at something quite different, uh, like drug crime or something different. So uh, you can select crime type here under the field that we're going to filter by. So uh, filter by different things, crime type we're going to pick. And we're going to say, you know, is or is not, or starts with or contains, or whatever. So um, if I said starts with B, for example, if I'm being really lazy, apply that should be just the vehicle crimes. I know what have I done? Let's check again. Are there two things with V? Uh, violent crimes, and so here we go. That's a good example. Violent crime and vehicle crime have uh, been filtered down. Uh, so I'm just going to edit that filter, but you can see the effect there. But put VE this time. There we go. So it's just picking uh, crimes to start with VE, which in this case is vehicle crime. I could have typed in the whole word um, and hasn't been showing anything else like violent crimes and so on. So now we've got a filter of just uh, uh, the pink crimes uh, on this particular pink purple color, which is the uh, the vehicle crimes in Bath, and we can start to see if there's any pattern. You can do this as you, I showed you before for any place in the UK and for any month in the last few years. So it's hugely rich data source, and you can be looking at your own location for that. And you might be thinking, well, I wonder why vehicle crimes are uh, concentrated in particular areas if there's any uh, logical pattern to it. Of course, this is just one month's data, so I could have brought in maybe a year's worth of data by. Uh, uh, editing it into Excel a little bit, as I showed you earlier in part two, and and then uh, seeing if there are more clusterings and patterns. Uh, but uh, just to show you that functionality for the moment, um, if you want to get rid of the fill, actually, I'll show you one other thing before I get rid of it. If I go to the table now, 
one thing you'll quickly realize is that it's only going to show the filter data rather than all of them, so it shouldn't be showing 13,000 dots. It should just show how many vehicle crimes are uh, in the Avon area. Of course, it's not just in the map view. There are uh, dots outside this map view in the Avon area, but it says there's 699. So I know in May that there was 699 uh, vehicle crimes reported in the Avon district area. Um, police area. So again, that's quite a useful uh, way of just looking at the data and filtering and getting some uh, information about it. Just going to remove the filter, come back to showing all the uh, crimes for this region. So we're back to normal. Okay, so those are the uh, some some useful controls there for visualizing and manipulating your data, but the most useful one is going to be uh, this one, which is uh, change the style. The style here was created automatically when I put the data in by what's called Smart Mapping in ArcGIS Online, which recognised it as thinking, well, crime type was probably the most useful thing to show here, and it did a good job on that. But if not, I can uh, pick any of the other things. So this obviously crime ID and other things. There's no reason to show any of the other data in this particular data set, but it's showing all things I could show. Uh, crime type's the only one of any, really any use interest. Um, and at the moment it's picked uh, unique symbols, uh, and uh, if I go into the options for that one, you can see that I can control various things. So if I wanted uh, I don't know, antisocial behaviour not to be read or be something else, I can uh, click on it and I can play around with the symbols or even uh, go for... Uh, different types of uh, symbols as well if I wanted to play around with it so it doesn't have to be colours, it can be actual images and shapes and so on um, to highlight certain features or bring them out if I think that works. Um, you can change the symbol size there as well. Um, uh, uh, there's a sort of colour palette you can choose from as well if you didn't like the original colour palette that was being chosen. Um, there. So uh, uh, a range of colours how much difference it will make. But I'll pick that one as an example. Um, but as I say, more powerfully, it's probably to change the individual colour of a particular thing just to bring out the uh, colours you think will really work. So I'll put that as purple for antisocial behaviour. Um, okay, so that worked. And uh, there we go, antisocial behaviour is now purple, so it sort of brings them out a bit more. Um, again, you can change the transparency here, and you could change the size of the symbols as well under the shape. So uh, this is where you've got to think a little bit carefully how you're going to zoom into this and what size you want to see it so that symbols are clear and visible and don't overlap too much. So at this scale that might be a bit cluttered but of course if I zoom in and look at the data then those sort of size circles that I've just created might work quite nicely in terms of covering this area nicely. So again these are things you can play around with. So those are some of the controls under the unique symbols which is uh, relevant for this. In other types of data set you may have numerical symbols, uh, values, so you may have something like um, uh, think of a crime factor, but let's say it was fear of crime and people were rating their fear of crime from 1 to 10, let's say, and that value was in the dot, then you would be able to show the data in a different way. Um, uh, it would give you a different option here to show them as proportional circles or as colour shaded symbols, so it would show the numbers 1 to 10 in different sizes, circles or other shapes, or as uh, different colours for their severity. Uh, but this data hasn't got that option, so it's not really relevant. The other thing I think is particularly useful is a heat map, and I'll show you particularly why. Uh, on this data, it looks like uh, this is where all the crimes are located, but actually it's slightly deceptive, because if I click on a dot here, you can see that uh, it's actually got six crimes located over that particular dot. It's not one single crime that's been reported in May. So it's obviously got a bit of a clustering there. If I go to this next feature arrow, you can see that you know we have theft and antisocial behaviour that occurred here, and another antisocial behaviour, and so on. As I go, scroll through the five and six public order offence and so on, shoplifting uh, now that occurred here. So you've got six different crimes that occurred here, but of course I can't see that because I've got one single dot. So the visualisation of this map is actually slightly flawed. Uh, and you need to be sort of aware of that because we've got the dots exactly reported at pretty much exactly the same spot. Um, there are a couple of ways around that, but a very quick way is using a heat map. Um, it won't show you exactly which type of crime, but it will at least show you concentrations of crime. Of course, if you want to show individual crimes, that's where you're going to have to um, uh, sort of filter, as I said to you before, for particular types of crime to sort of highlight them so it gets rid of others. But if I do a heat map for all of these, select that, uh, you'll see how this changes the effect. So what I can see here is uh, what's called a heat map, which looks at the concentration of uh, crimes that are occurring in particular locations. Uh, just double check, I don't think that will make any difference to the heat map. No, okay. Um, so 
just go back to this. So all I did is I changed them to single symbols, but I was just double checking how the heat map was working. Um, it wasn't influenced by the chrome type. But uh, but here you can see I've just got these dots, but as I said, some of these dots have multiple crimes, nine crimes in that particular location, and so on. So by selecting the heat map, I start to get a better picture of some of these concentrations of crimes uh, and where they're really occurring. See where sort of. Uh, Sort of clusters of them are and uh, maybe why that is and I could sort of start investigating further using perhaps my primary data when I go and visit my site and location some of the reasons why clustering particularly occurs in uh, one or other location. So you can see as I zoom in it uh, changes these clusterings depending on how I'm zoomed in and I can see different sort of uh, degrees of clustering so I can start to get down right to the street level data but if I uh, zoom out here to the sort of city-wide level the uh, heat map will change its layout and uh, show me the distribution slightly differently so I can see a general city-wide clustering around here I can also see some other pockets of clustering uh, but I can also as I said zoom in and see more detail on it so it's a very powerful tool the heat map works if I go to the options under kind of a again a high to low uh, concentration um, density uh, uh, visualization and there are a few things that you can kind of change with this so if I change the uh, the way the heat uh, color system works a little bit it kind of exaggerates the heat map a little bit again this is just something you can play with to help uh, sort of visualize your data and get the right kind of uh, patterns picked out in it um, and uh, equally you can change the symbols here to other a few other types so uh, this is going from uh, blue to red now uh, or blue to white and I might go okay now I want to maybe blue is going to be my strongest color I might reverse that and then change that now and I've got a uh, concentration of crimes there in blue I expected that to be more blue but uh, I think that's because I fiddled around with this before let's go to there um, there we go um, so now we've got a colour ram from uh, sort of a, a yellowish to a red to a blues and the blues being higher concentration of crime. But anyway, you can see how you can play around with that in principle. Uh, when you're happy to press OK and done, you can see now I've got this new map layout with this particular style. And coming back to what a map is, if I do save now, it will update my map. My map then has these particular layouts and features and colour schemes and whatever I've played around with and added with it, uh, filters and so on. And so when I open the map again, it will have that uh, those functionalities. Uh, within it. Okay, so there's an overview of some of the ways to visualize your data. Uh, the next tutorial is going to look a little bit more about adding secondary data and uh, on afterwards about sort of data analysis. So that gives you an overview of some of the ways you can visualize your data quite powerfully to try and uh, communicate patterns within your data, uh, to take some sort of creativity and ownership over your data in ArcGIS Online uh, in order to show sort of crime data, crime patterns quite powerfully, quite effectively. And then obviously, you know, link it to primary data that you may have collected about particular sites. OK, I'm Raphael Heath, head of Geography at Royal High School Bath. And uh, this video has uh, been supported by the Royal Geographical Society's Innovative Teaching Grant to help students with their personal investigations, particularly at A-level.